Martinism, which has been described as being really just a philosophy, like the Cartesianism of Descartes or the Spinozism of Spinoza, is a very high form of spirituality that gives the person who has the ability to possess it a vision of the world free from any material contingency. While France was restless with the first signs of the revolution, one man was endeavouring to raise the awareness of his contemporaries. At every possible opportunity, he encouraged those around him to revert to an authentic and virtuous spirituality. Joseph de Maistre described him as being the most learned, wisest and most elegant of theosophists. He was highly knowledgeable and was opposed to the atheism and rationalism of the Age of Enlightenment. This theosophist, born in Amboise, Touraine on 18 January 1743, was called Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin. Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin did not take credit for his ideas, but attributed them for the most part to the teachings he received from two mystics who he greatly admired throughout his life, namely Martinez de Pasquale, to whom he was once personal secretary, and Jacob Bohem, who he knew solely through his works. The former was the founder of the Order of the Elus Cohen, or elect priest, of which Saint Martin was member for several years. He was also the author of a fundamental text on Western esotericism called Treatise on the Reintegration of Beings. Jacob Bohem was a 17th century German theosopher and is considered to have played a major role in Christian Illuminism. Hegel regarded him as the first German philosopher. The central idea of St. Martin's philosophy, which he took from Pasquale, was that of reintegration. In other words, the necessity for mankind to regain its original state and to become reintegrated with the divine world in complete purity. This idea served as the basis for several books written by him under the pseudonym of the Unknown Philosopher. The first was entitled Of Errors and of Truth and was published in 1775. It met with considerable success in Europe and was translated into German and Russian. His other works include The Natural Table of the Relationships Existing Between God, Humanity and the Universe in 1782, The Man of Desire in 1790, Echi Homo in 1792, The New Man in 1792, The Spirit of Things in 1800, the Ministry of the Human Spirit in 1802, as well as several other posthumous works. Although the unknown philosopher greatly admired Martinez de Pasquale and considered him to be his first master, he broke with the methods used by the Illus Cohens in order to gain access to the great truths of existence. They practiced theurgy, which consisted of evoking, in the words of Pasquale, the intermediary spirits, in other words, angels and celestial beings, in order to obtain their help and support. Judging these methods to be unreliable and even dangerous, St. Martin chose to take another path and urged his readers to opt for personal study and introspection instead. In this respect, he placed great emphasis on the beneficial effects of prayer and meditation. As soon as they were published, St. Martin's books aroused the interest of his contemporaries, or at least of those who were interested in spirituality, and were searching for the deeper meaning of existence. A circle of disciples known as the Society of Intimates was therefore progressively formed around the man and his ideas. Some of them simply read his works. The rest, who were far fewer in number, participated in discussions held in his presence. 
after his death in 1803, his teachings and practices were privately transmitted from one initiate to another. At the end of the 19th century, Augustin Chabousseau and Gérard Encourse, better known as Papus, discovered that they had both received an initiation linking them to Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin. Anxious to carry on perpetuating this, in 1889 they established an initiatic movement that they called the Martinist Order. Although the order had no structure or any real rules at that time, the number of members increased rapidly. Thus, Martinism, a movement placed under the aegis of the unknown philosopher, came into being. In 1891, Papus was elected Grand Master of the Martinist Order. The order grew rapidly under his direction, not only in France, but also in the majority of European countries, in Russia and in both North and South America. At the same time, he organized the publication of magazines, notably Initiation and the Veil of Isis, aimed at making Martinism known to a wider audience. In 1892, an inner circle was established, the Kabbalistic Order of the Rosy Cross, an esoteric movement that had been revived in 1889 by Stanislas de Gaïta and Josephin Pellada. In 1914, the First World War broke out, causing the Martinist Order to become dormant. Papus died in 1916, two years before fighting ended. Several Martinists aspired to succeed him. In Lyon, Jean Brico attempted to perpetuate the Martinist order by giving it a more Masonic form. In Paris, Victor Blanchard created the Synarchial Martinist order, associating Martinist philosophy with the ideas of Saint-Yves d'Alvedre. Disapproving of these deviations, Augustin Chabousseau and several survivors of the Supreme Council of the Martinist Order founded the traditional Martinist Order in 1931. Some of the more illustrious members of this order included Lucien Chamuel and Victor Emile Michelet, poet and friend of the greatest writers of the time. In 1939, following a decision by the directors of FUDOSI, the Universal Federation of Initiatic Orders and Societies, the majority of Martinists that were dispersed at that time through several different movements were placed under the authority of the traditional Martinist order. The most active Martinist movement today remains the traditional Martinist order. Operating under the conservatorship of the ancient mystical order Rosi Crucis since the beginning of the 20th century, it is present worldwide and transmits its teachings in two ways. Orally, during meetings held in local bodies known as heptads or ateliers, and in writing through manuscripts sent individually to each member. Those who so wish may combine these two methods of study. It should be noted that the teachings are divided into three fundamental degrees, followed by a fourth that is more akin to a circle of reflection and deeper analysis. What do the Martinist teachings address? Essentially, major themes relating to the Judeo-Christian tradition, but from an esoteric point of view. Subjects studied include, for example, the origins of the creation, the fall of man, the Kabbalah, the Old and New Testament, the Apocryphal, Gospels, the Book of Nature, the Book of Humanity, Sophia, the Science of Numbers, Angelology, the Invisible World, Celestial Symbols, etc. It should be noted that these subjects are studied from a theoretical and practical angle in that they are subjected to mystical experiments aimed at better integrating the concepts covered. In addition to the oral and written teachings that it currently perpetuates, the traditional Martinist order publishes the Pantacle magazine. As an authoritative reference in the field, this magazine is accessible to the public and offers a variety of articles related to Martinism and Western esotericism in general. In addition, through the Rose Croix University International, the TMO also regularly holds seminars and conferences on themes related to Martinist thought. Despite what one might think at first, Martinism is not limited to intellectual study. It is above all a philosophy, in other words, a form of thinking and acting. 
According to the words of the unknown philosopher, its aim is to lead Martinists to cause the divine germ that all humans possess within the depths of their selves to bear fruit and in so doing to think, speak and act under the direction of that which is most spiritual within them. From a Martinist point of view, anyone who succeeds in doing this becomes a divine agent among people and ensures his or her reintegration into the Adamic state after death, thereby finding eternal felicity. Although Martinism is based on the Judeo-Christian tradition, we would be wrong to think that it is intended exclusively for Jews and Christians. As it is not a religion but a practical philosophy, any person who is interested in the subjects raised previously may be considered a Martinist at heart. This explains why the traditional Martinist order has men and women members who come from a diverse range of religions, but also some who do not belong to any religions at all. Indeed, they come from all races, all nationalities and all social classes. The TMO, therefore, is both an international and a cosmopolitan fraternity. Although Martinism is open to believers from all religions, it admittedly does require a special interest in Christian symbolism and the Master Jesus. But this importance is of a different kind than that given to it by the Christian religion, whether it be Catholic, Protestant or Orthodox. Indeed, Martinists do not restrict themselves to making Christ the Messiah to whom Christianity attributes the redemption of humanity. In their opinion, he was the incarnation of divine wisdom as it is destined to manifest itself in every human being during his or her spiritual evolution. They therefore refer to him as Yehoshua and liken him to the great architect of the universe. According to the Martinist tradition, it is oral training that best perpetuates the spirit of Martinism. This is so because each meeting is held in a temple where decorum is inspired by the Judeo-Christian tradition. In addition, the work accomplished in such a temple is opened and closed by a traditional ritual that assists in creating an atmosphere conducive to fraternal exchanges and spiritual communion. It should also be noted that this is where Martinist initiations are conferred, just as they have been done since the beginning of the order. Non-religious and non-dogmatic, each initiation consists of a ceremony whose purpose is to transmit the appropriate degree to its recipient and to offer the person the esoteric keys linked to this degree. For Martinists, there is, however, one initiation that transcends all others, that may be received in a temple. It is the ultimate one that comes from the inner master or God within. To quote the words of Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin, this initiation is that by which we can enter into the heart of God and cause God's heart to enter into us to form there an indissoluble marriage. There is no other mystery in arriving at this holy initiation than to go further and further down until we reach the depths of our being. Martinism is sometimes described as the way of the heart. Why? Because its aim is to awaken the innate intelligence of the heart, something that led the unknown philosopher to say, we must not rack our brains but our hearts. By virtue of this principle, Martinist teachings do not target the mental state and are not aimed at amassing purely intellectual knowledge. Instead, their purpose is to awaken our awareness of the divine within us and to express this through our actions, which explains the importance given by Martinists to spiritual regeneration. In this respect, they work towards perfecting themselves not only for self-improvement, but also to create a better society. One of Louis-Claude de Saint-Martin's thoughts appropriately sums up the Martinist ideal. Seeking to know ourselves as we are involves a great deal of work, but we must then work towards knowing ourselves as we should be. These two disciplines are connected and must occupy us continually. A third discipline follows on from these two, and this is without doubt the most difficult of all. It is only after having learnt to recognise what we should be that we must relentlessly work towards becoming so. Mindful of working towards their spiritual germination and contributing to raising awareness, it is precisely to this end that today's Martinists consecrate their time through their teachings and their philosophy.